Okay, now we're going to be talking about Jung's psychological types. These are those opposites that we talked about here. And it's these psychological types that are reflected in those that Myers-Briggs uh, tests uh, on, on tests and similar ones. Uh, again, based, based on this aspect of Jung's theory. The idea that we have these opposing forces. Introversion is, again, turning psychic energy inward, looking, looking inward. And the orientation is the subjective, meaning from the personal point of view. So you're the, the person who has more of an introverted point of view is looking at the subjective, their own personal view of the world, let's say. When it comes to extroversion, it's looking outward. It's looking at the real world, the world that's out there. And this is toward the objective, what you can see in the real world, not as what is inward, but what is on the outside. So we possess both of these forces. Sometimes we look inward. Sometimes we look objectively at the world around us. Uh, but bottom line is, is that there are certain that the different people are more heavily focused on the introverted, Others are more heavily focused on the extrovert. Now, Jung talks about four uh, functions that we have that can take either an introverted or an extroverted bent. Uh, thinking, feeling, sensing, and in, in, intuiting. Okay, so thinking, feeling, sensation, and intuition. So there are then eight possible types of people, psychological types. People who are extroverted thinkers, people who are introverted thinkers, people who have who are extroverted feelers, and introverted feelers. Extroverted sensing, introverted sensing, extroverted intuiting, and introverted intuiting. let's start with the thinking component, the thinking function. Logical intellectual activity producing a chain of ideas. So, you know, basically sounds like what we, how we would define thinking. Uh, the extroverted thinking would be you're thinking concretely. You're thinking about real world things that you can observe. You're, you're, it's just about the facts. Extroverted thinkers are noticing what is, are thinking about what is, what they can see and feel, what, what they can see and hear and smell and everything, the, the objective things that they can see. That is, they're thinking based on logic, but based on logic that is factual, objective facts. Introverted thinking is thinking from a more personal, subjective perspective. Can be very creative in terms of how you think, but not very objective. Okay, so your introverted thinking is more personally how you personally think about things. Feeling is your evaluation, uh, how or your judgment of something. Do you evaluate things positively or negatively? How do you feel about something? Okay. And so extroverted feeling involves making value judgments based on objective data. You, you, and sort of there are these various uh, standards, you know, the, the widely accepted standards of judgment. You're going to pretty much follow those standards in terms of making your judgment about what is good and bad, what is right and wrong. So your extroverted feeling is based on what is objectively out there and that's what you make your judgment about that's what you make your uh, that's how you form your opinions about things your introverted feeling is you're making value judgments based on your own personal su uh, subjective perceptions you are ignoring conventional beliefs you are making your value judgments based on what you feel inside of you. Okay. 
And that's more of what the introverted feeling or introverted judging might be, uh, might be called. Sensation is the way we essentially respond to stimuli. So we receive, you know, physical stimuli and we perceive them. Again, just so like talking about like from intro to psychology, sensation and perception. So this is how we are responding to stimuli. If you are sensing, if you are extroverted sensing, you are perceiving the stimuli in the real world and you're perceiving them objectively. So you're hearing sounds, you are feeling the, uh, you are feeling the, uh, the texture of things, and you are doing it objectively. You are perceiving it as they are in the real world. With introverted sensing, you are taking your own interpretation of what you are sensing. So, in other words, you are sensing stimuli, but you are putting your own personal spin on it, so to speak. You are sensing it the way you, uh, you are in a subjective way, the way you perceive it from inside, rather than how it objectively actually is. Intuition, this is again kind of the mystical stuff here, I think, with uh, Jung. Perceptions beyond, you know, your conscious perception, maybe your deep underlying, maybe something what's in your unconscious, how you might be unconsciously perceiving things. And that would be reflected in your intuition. So, your extroverted intuition, meaning you are perceiving the external reality and you're perceiving it subliminally, below the level of your consciousness, but you are perceiving it. Introverted intuiting, you are having unconscious perception of facts and things that really do not resemble external reality. It's kind of like your own little unique dream world within you, and that is what you are intuiting. Okay? So, the, these basic uh, eight types that we've mentioned to you all exist, but we all have these capacities within all of us. People who are self-realized are able to, uh, you know, be, be highly developed in, both, in all four of these, thinking, feeling, sensing, and intuiting. And again, the self-realization involves balance between all of those different aspects of ourselves. So, how did Jung go about investigating uh, individuals in terms of how their personality is structured, how their, uh, you know, you know, perhaps what their personality types might be? Uh, so, for example, they would might do a word association test. You might have heard this. You know, I'm I'm going to say a word, and then you're going to say the first thing that comes to your mind without even thinking about it. And in this case, you might be undercovering, you know, personal complexes the person might be having. Uh, you know, what what images might they be uh, might be most salient to them at the moment? What archetype might be there? Uh, you might also identify dream analysis, do dream analysis, and this is where those archetypes come into play, right? In your dreams, these collective, uh, you know, these archetypes from the collective unconscious reveal themselves in various things that are happening in your dream. Okay, And again, when you can understand these things, these aspects about yourself, the idea is to move you towards self-realization. And that's probably what, they, what a Jungian therapist would want to do, is push you towards that balance, that self-realization. Uh, you're also wanting to kind of play with your imagination and follow those images and think about them. And the idea is to reveal those archetypal images, become aware of them, and so on. You think about psychotherapy, that are, uh, if you were to go to a Jungian therapist, and there are still Jungian therapists out there, uh, you know, you want to, the idea is to get you to confess to some secret that is uh, gnawing at you. Once you become, you know, once you're able to confess to that, you know, you now have to 
find out what is behind it, maybe bring up what are the archetypes that might be relevant here. And Freud, you know, again, but Freud really wanted to, you know, explain, think about why you're having these thoughts, what is this thing that, and understand where it's coming from. And Freud did this thing. Um, they want to educate you as social beings, uh, Jungian therapists, so uh, similar to what Adler might do is, you know, your interactions with other people. Uh, transformation occurs as is, is one of the goals of therapy, trying to transform you. Uh, uh, so first of all, the therapist must be transformed into a healthy human being, and then the therapist helps the patient with self-realization. So the transformation is that move towards self-realization, achieving that balance, achieving uh, you know between all of those different forces, all of those different aspects of ourselves. The opposites balancing out each other, and that's the goal, is self-realization.